Daniele De Vincenti, and today with my colleague Lorenzo Farinelli, I will present you Cluster, an embedded FPGA-based cluster orchestrator for accelerated distributed algorithms. Nowadays, more and more applications are data intensive and come with time or portability constraints. Thus, there is a growing interest for complex embedded computing systems. Some work on creating an orchestration framework has already been done by the FARD project, which is a runtime management system specifically developed for task control. Cluster instead is a pink based FPGA cluster orchestrator purposely built for data intensive applications and thus extending the FARD project. This is useful, especially when dealing with neural networks like the YOLO implementation or AlexNet CNN, because it allows the user to have big data flows between each node. In order to improve performances, it is written in compiled language and it is then exposed to the end user via a set of Python APIs. In this work, the cluster orchestrator will then be evaluated with a distributed accelerated version of the YOLO object detector. Cluster has been built to run on any cluster of multi-SOC FPGAs that support OpenCL for data intensive applications. And this is thanks to the efficient management system that is based on the BLAST function project. This is done in order to allow the user to take advantage of the on-the-fly reconfiguration capabilities of the cluster orchestrator in order to start new tasks or jobs dynamically. We now move to consider how we actually designed and implemented our infrastructure. At the core of cluster is the so-called node manager which is a distributed system written in C++ running on the general purpose processors of the SOCs. Its goals are to manage the local hardware resources and orchestrates all the nodes running the application. This is enabled by an ensemble of subcomponents, which have been designed with the two principles of modularity and single responsibility, which take care, for instance, of querying the other nodes for status or availability, collect and manage the replies, and handle the app launch logic. All these functionalities are then supported by the communication layer, which acts on two different levels, a channel to send small operational messages and one to transfer large data files among the nodes. Third party users can then access the node manager services by means of Python APIs. In fact, even though the system is written in C++, we decided to use Python as an external interface due to its high popularity in the fields of data science or experimental sciences, its ease of use compared to C++, and the availability of libraries to seamlessly interact with the onboard FPGA. These APIs are then organized into two distinct sets. The execution APIs, which define the base classes representing the task that users can extend to implement their custom behavior, along with an interface that provides methods to interact with the local node manager. And the interaction APIs, which provide a standalone client called Plaster API to control the, the deployment, execution, and output retrieval phases of the app. The coexistence of these two different environments is then made possible by translation layer, which takes care of mapping all the Python objects and classes into the proper C++ counterparts used by the system. Last but not least, we designed the, design the architecture of Plaster using an event-driven approach where nodes exchange messages in an asynchronous way over the network, independently from the actual topology. These events are represented by serializable classes, which inherit from an abstract one and specialize in all the meaningful events that can happen in the system, for instance, the requests and the replies. They are then handled using a visitor pattern, which also allows us to easily extend the system's behavior in the future, such as adding new types of supported events. In the picture, we can see how this approach is exploited to make a node retrieve a file from an unknown remote location. As the first thing, a file discovery event is sent, 
which is called by the owner of the node, which will reply with a file availability event. Upon receiving it, the consumer will send a file transfer request and the file transfer process will start. After implementing all these details, we move to testing the infrastructure, designing an experimental prototype, as we see in the picture, which is composed of three exhaling spins at one bores with a layout optimized for the airflow. On that, we developed an evaluation application with the aim of stressing the main points addressed by Plaster, such as using an accelerated algorithm on the FPGA, needing to transfer a large amount of data among the nodes, needing to split the computational load on multiple FPGAs due to the high resource requirements. More in detail, we implemented a distributed application to detect abandoned objects from the video feed of security cameras, which is composed of two tasks, a pre-processing task running on one board, which is responsible of gathering the video input and splitting it into frames, which are, which are sent to the post-processing task running on the two remaining boards which perform object detection using the YOLO neural network. Eventually, we measured the system's performance using two main metrics. As the first thing, we focused on the file transfer latency to move data from one board to the other, to assess the actual overhead of the system and of the communication layer. To do so, we measured the time elapsed from the task's request of a file to its actual availability, repeating the measurement several times to simulate different processing times for each frame such as the time elapsed between two consecutive file requests. We see that after an initial variable delay, the time drops to a constant value, due to the fact that while the second board is busy analyzing the frame, the first one will keep in feeding its processing pipeline. In this way, even though the system is distributed, there is no considerable difference from the task perspective from having the files locally available. But at the same time, being distributed, we were able to implement models that would not otherwise fit into the limited resources of a single port. We then convert the results to the state-of-the-art FART framework, which does not actually provide a native functionality for file transfer, but requires the user to write its own mechanism using the existing messaging platform, obtaining a speed-up of 11 times thanks to the already-mentioned pipeline feeding. Thanks to this pipeline feeding, we also consider the improvement brought by FPGA implementation of the neural network to detect objects on each frame. And in particular, we compared the time spent on each frame by both the hardware and software implementations, repeating the test five times and collecting the results in the table, achieving a speed up of more than four times. So to sum up, we've shown how we successfully implemented an orchestrator for a multi-FPGA cluster to run data intensive applications along with an evaluation app that detects abandoned objects. In particular, with the described design, we've been able to exploit the communication layer to hide the file transfer latency to move large data between nodes, introducing nevertheless a negligible overhead, but at the same time, being able to implement large neural network to improve the frame detection latency. Obtaining in the end two main results, an 11 times speed up to move large data among boards compared to the state-of-the-art FARD framework, and a four times speed up to analyze each frame compared to the software version of YOLO. So if you have any questions, we invite you to join our live session. And in the meantime, we thank you for your attention.